Hello people and Pokemon alike, I'm Ambrosity. New ideas and concepts are always being thrown around in the Pokemon community, so I figured I'd throw my own thoughts into the pool of new cards that could be added into the Pokemon TCG. And with the upcoming rotation, this video is more topical than ever. Unless the rotation has already occurred by the time I upload this. I didn't think this through very well, now did I? Oh well, onward! Starting with the supporter cards, we have Arun. Arun? Arun? I don't even know how to pronounce his name. He's like Arcus for trainers. Arun was an NPC in Auras, and I think he's special enough for the Pokemon Company to give him his own supporter card. Well, special at least in one way or another. Here's what I have for Arun. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, Prevent the effects of all trainer cards, except tool and stadium cards, done to you and your Pokémon. So, in its simplicity, it's a supporter ancient trait barrier. But it also prevents the effects of all trainer cards done to you, so you and your hand stay safe for the next turn. That means if your opponent plays an N or a Judge, you don't shuffle your hand. And if they play the odd Psychic's Third Eye, you don't show your hand. I think it's a neat little supporter card that could have its niche every now and then. Next up in the supporter lineup is Camper. Or could be Picnicker. Either way. This is what I thought up for Camper. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, remove all additional effects on all attacks on all Pokémon in play, in each player's hand, in each player's discard pile, and each player's deck. <sighs> <laughs> that was a mouthful. You might be saying this sounds an awful lot like Pokemon Ranger. And it does. But instead of being Pokemon Ranger, it's preventing the scenario in which Pokemon Ranger would need to be played. Any attack that locks the use of any type of card or Pokemon is powerful, and this could be used to prevent your opponent from even using those attacks. Maybe it's just me hating to be restrained while I play, but I want more ways to escape the many different types of locks in the game. However, this card also has another use. It removes the effect of the attack not applying weakness or resistance. The card I would see utilizing this the most is Yon Mega Break. Suddenly this thing is hitting for 200 damage for weakness without any energy. That is frightening and awesome! Next is a supporter I'm surprised we haven't gotten yet. Zinnia. You'd think being heiress to the Draconis would earn you at least a supporter card. Well, let's fix that. Out of all of these supporters, I think Zinnia has the biggest potential to be broken. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, each player's active Dragon-type Pokémon does 20 more damage times the number of prize cards the opposing trainer has taken. If you're losing, this card is fucking broken. But it's also a double-edged sword. If your opponent's playing Dragon-types, you're most likely both going to be benefiting from this card. Doing a total of a hundred more damage just because you played a supporter is incredibly powerful, but at the risk of your opponent using against you, do you want to use it? It's a wild card, pun intended, just like Xenia herself. I understand that not everyone is going to be playing dragon types, they're not as powerful in the TCG as they are in the video games. During the black and white era, the supporter Irish did something a little similar, but the damage was 10 rather than 20 per price card, and only your Pokémon could use it. However, as much as a Dragon Trainer Iris is, Xenia is just so much more iconic to the Dragon type in my opinion. So I'd figure let's make her more interesting than the Unova Champion. Bitch. That's Alder's title. And the last supporter idea for this video is Aroma Lady. Heal 50 damage from all of your Grass-type Pokémon. This card cannot be played if you do not have at least one non-Grass-type Pokémon in play. 
and that non-grass type Pokemon is more often than not going to be a Shaman, or something else that's kind of weak. Healing 50 damage from all of your grass type Pokemon is completely busted, so you should at least have some sort of vulnerability on your field when you do it. This one non-grass type Pokemon is not getting healed and as such can be Lysandered out and taken out rather easily. This prevents you from just shrinking your bench down to three grass type Pokemon with Parallel City and just healing everything. You could play the stadium after you've played Aroma Lady, but this adds another layer of difficulty to using the card as you have to have the card in your hand to use it after using Aroma Lady. And since you've used your support to heal, you've lost your draw support for the turn. That is big. Especially Mega Sceptile EX would be able to abuse this greatly, as the deck uses Shamans, but everything else is grass. And now onto the item cards. Heart Scale, being one of my favorite items in the video games, deserves a card for itself. Choose one of your Pokémon in play. That Pokémon can use all the attacks of its previous evolutions until the end of your turn. I believe this card could breathe a new life into evolution decks. This item could definitely work for Pokemon like Primal Groudon EX and Mega Mewtwo EX, whose pre-evolved forms have good attacks that are useful to them as well. Regular Groudon EX has massive rent doing more base damage than Primal Groudon EX's Gaia Volcano and Mewtwo EX's damage change are very big parts of each deck's functionality. Being able to play more versatile stadiums at the expense of using Heartscale instead of Shrine of Memories may breathe a little more versatility into these decks. Next, I've come up with something very special for the different colored shards in the game. Green represents grass, blue represents water, red represents fire, and yellow represents lightning. Let's pretend you're using a red shard. You may play more than one red shard at a time. Attach an equal amount of Fire-type energy from your deck to one of your Fire-type Pokémon in play to the amount of Red Shards you played. Energy acceleration of the highest degree. Now, most of the time you're probably going to be playing one, maybe two Shards. I mean, there's only four in your deck. How often are you going to have all four of them in your hand? You could add certain limitations to this, like attaching only to basic Pokémon, but at this point, it's still just a thought, not an actual card. And I really like this idea. It especially makes the currently very slow Lightning-type decks much more quick and fast-paced. Next, let's move on to the tool cards. First up is Quick Claw. Once a turn, you may flip a coin. If heads, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage, done to the Pokémon this card is attached to, by your opponent's active Pokémon on their next turn. So it's a buffed bent spoon, but with a chance. If playing against a lucky person, this card could be the most annoying piece of shit you will ever encounter. But hey, it's not like overpowered cards haven't been banned in the past, Lysander's trump card. I'd like to at least see what kind of effect this card could have on the community and the game. Probably a very salty one. Next are Choice Band and Choice Scarf. Choice Band. The Pokémon this card is attached to does 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokémon, but can only use one attack, the attack you choose to use first after attaching this card. Choice Scarf. The Pokémon this card is attached to can attack twice in a single turn, but can only use one attack, the attack you choose to use first after attaching this card. Broken as fuck on Pokémon with just one attack. I especially like the concept of Choice Scarf, making Zygarde EX a better Medicham. Isn't that just hilarious? Especially after rotation when there's nearly no way of removing tool cards. <laughs> so essentially, Choice Band grants you more damage but limits you to one move, and Choice Scarf grants you Ancient Trait Barrage but limits you to one move. I think it would be a good idea to add removing all additional effects on Choice Scarf. Just to make it just a little bit less absolutely busted. Eject Button. 
If the Pokémon this card is attached to is damaged by an attack from your opponent's active Pokémon, switch this Pokémon with one of your benched Pokémon. Rather self-explanatory in its description, Eject Button allows you to switch a Pokémon that's been hurt. In other words, it allows your Pokémon to PUSSY OUT! And the last tool card is Energy Tank. You may attach an additional energy from your hand to the Pokémon this card is attached to. Hey Mewtwo! We found your favorite tool card! Yeah, I won't lie, this would be the perfect tool card for Mega Mewtwo EX. But other Pokémon who need a lot of energy to attack would also benefit from this tool card. And any other Pokémon that benefits from piling energy onto it would also benefit greatly. Energy acceleration is always an issue when you're deck building, and this could help you make your slightly slower decks a little bit more competitive. Sure, it would also benefit the decks that are already competitive like Mewtwo, Eveltal, and Darkrai, but hey, more fun for everyone, right? Now, let's move on to my favorite type of trainer card, the Stadium cards. And first on the list is Sky Pillar. How in the hell does one of the most iconic locations in Auras not have a Stadium card yet? Well, let's Fix that. All Dragon-type Pokémon in play have no weakness or resistance, simple but effective. So fairies can no longer harm my dragons, whoop de doo I think there's not a single Dragon-type Pokémon in the TCG right now that has a resistance but hey, accounting for the future, right? I just want Dragon-types to finally have their own stadium, they've been riding off of stadiums like fucking Fairy Garden for too long. Funnily enough, they've actually been using the stadium that helps their greatest foe the most. <laughs> Imagine that. I actually looked into it, and I'm surprised Victory Road has not gotten a stadium card of its own yet. Well, let's continue with the theme of victory. Each player takes one more prize card. Combine this with Delta Plus or Umbreon EX and the Star Piece and fuck your opponent. No, but seriously, I would love this kind of stadium card. It absolutely benefits each side of the field, and immensely so. Plus, bumping it means you're denying your opponent prizes, slowing down their game that way. Mount Pyre. You see, in the upcoming rotation, Psychic is losing a lot of its support. Mainly Dimension Valley, which was undoubtedly the most powerful stadium in the entire standard format. So let's give him a new stadium to play with. One of the most unique locations in Auras, Mount Pyre absolutely deserves to get a unique stadium card as well. So let's go with this. All basic Psychic type Pokemon have no retreat cost. Psychic types get to fly cheap. Other types, well, fairy type, water type. Other types, fuck you, you're paying full price for your tickets. Pokemon Village. This place is just crying out loud for a stadium card. I think this kind of concept would be really cool. Each player's active Pokémon gets plus 10 more HP for each Pokémon they have in play. I can taste the rage directed towards this plus Fighting Fury Belt. But since the meta is moving towards more of a two-shot with this rotation, I think this is a very fitting stadium card. One-shots are going to be more rare as is, so why not give your Pokémon even more survivability? Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video! If you liked the video, click the like button, it's right down there. And if you really liked the video, click subscribe, or get a friend to subscribe on your behalf if you somehow haven't yet. Thank you for giving me some of your time to tell you about my shitty ideas for the trading card game. Until next time, my darklings, have a wonderful rest of your day.